Yeah. But we're going to go now. We're going to head down to the NFC South. We're going to cruise into the NFC South. And we're going to start with the New Orleans Saints. Not really a lot of uh, fantasy relevance here. They did get Bub Means later in the draft. And then, they, of course, they picked quarterback one, Spencer Rattler. In round five, the rattlesnake <laughs> landing in New Orleans. A lot of people thought it could be a third. There's just no way. Like we, <laughs> we didn't really like him, man. Yeah. But well, I mean, looking at New Orleans, I can say this right away. We were expecting a wide receiver too. We heard a lot of things about Roman Wilson, different people like that. The Saints didn't even go with a wide receiver to Bob Means, who's unimpressive in my opinion. Right. So I think the Saints did a horrible job. I mean, they did get Funga there at the tackle position in the first round, but nothing really. Fantasy relevance, I mean, but Coley McKinstry, good football player. But they didn't have a ton of picks either. I mean, they had uh, well, first and a second rounder, and they weren't up again to the fifth round. Yeah. So they must not have thought receivers a big, big need. But what can you expect out of this offense with Derek Carr? I mean, of course, you get a little offensive line help. It's not a bad thing, but they didn't bring in another weapon. I mean, how do you feel about this? I mean, yeah, I you, you wish they would. They really needed they really needed O line help and. uh I'm kind of blanking on who they took in the first round. Funga. Funga. Fuega, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was a really good pick for them. Really good for the run game as well. Yeah. So I I think they're going to try to run the ball some and just, you know, get a lave in one-on-one situations. And I, I think that's actually really good for a football standpoint. Yeah, and then they, I didn't realize they took that Kool-Aid McKinley too. McKinstry. Yeah. McKinstry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a good pick for them, man. That was, I mean, that was a good value. But, boy, they, they really need another receiver on the outside. All they got is a lave. I mean, I just, I'm not an A.T. Perry guy. I no. Mean, I, I don't think he's anything special. Michael so. Thomas is still there. Well, I mean, <laughs> He hasn't yeah. done nothing. He's always hurt, but trying to think if they brought anybody else in. I thought they brought in somebody that was okay, but I don't I mean think. it's nobody, obviously, that we're like, oh yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> so. sleeper. I don't think. So overall draft gate grade for New Orleans. We ain't gonna spend a lot of time I, on them. C plus. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I, I think they I think they did. Hey, you know what? Give them B minus. B minus. I'm gonna go C, Ty. B. My Saints. Yeah, I'll, I'll go like a B minus. Like I, I think they did. They did a lot of good football moves, but not a lot of good fantasy moves. Do we think we see ever Spencer Rattler at all? I mean, there's a possibility. I just think he's a backup man. Like if you can maybe even use this to to get Derek Carr really low. I think I would, and I'm not a Derek Carr fan, but it is his first year in there. I got to look at the contract because they did pay him, but I don't know when the out is or anything. Right. I mean, I think if you see him, I think it'll be injury related. He's exactly. not. He's not going to win out the no. job. I, I just, dude, he was so good in high school, and he just hasn't done jack shit. He like, hasn't done diddly poo. Some, no. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone we weren't high on at all. So no, I, I was. You know, Spencer Rattler coming into this whole process, like, oh yeah, like I was really excited. What was I let down? <laughs> you thought I, someone, I just was let down. Didn't, didn't the Saints pick up Sam Hartman too? I don't know. Probably. Is I think I think they picked agent. him up as a couple qu- couple QB one shows. I think I think it was them. Maybe they're gonna make a new show down there, in New Orleans. Maybe backup quarterback. <laughs> I gotta Google that. I know you just got picked <laughs> up. I was like, oh, yeah, there you go. But when I was listening to um, I was listening to XM whenever this was going on, and that's something they said. They thought maybe Michael Pratt would be the pick there because he's just right in their backyard. Like, right. That's even where the combine was. And, you know, I don't even think Michael Pratt was drafted. Another guy we weren't really as high on. I was wrong as the commanders. Yeah, Michael Pratt was commanders. drafted. He went to Green Bay. Oh, he went to Green Bay. Late. Okay. Yeah, super late. We're going to go over to the next team here. It's going to be the Carolina Panthers. You want to talk about fantasy relevance? They got a lot of these guys, and they did exactly what we said they were going to do. We said it show <laughs> after show. They're going to draft Xavier Leggett. And that's exactly who they got the first round. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there with Carolina. How do you feel about Xavier Leggett in this offense? Not very good. (laughs) Not very good. And he is wide receiver nine in my ranks. Just basically off pure of they got to try to justify the pick. And I mean, really, Deontay Johnson's probably going to be on the other side. He's Xavier Leggett's probably going to be their ex. And they have missed, missed, and missed. Maybe it changes. I do think, like, athletically, it would get, like, he is a beast. That's the same thing with Jonathan Mingo, man. Like, right. didn't really love Jonathan Mingo's tape. And then it's like, well, he's a good athlete. So maybe I'm falling same, in the same trap with, again. Same with Mingo. We yeah. didn't really like Mingo either. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think we were kind of lower. Then he got all that hype, and we were like, oh, we don't see it. But. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know. This was the pick of all picks that we've been saying for months. Uh, I'm not going to have any Leggett because where he goes off the board is like, you know, his teammate now, Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson. Like, I'd rather gamble, you know, on one of them guys, on one of them guys or, or, or Lad McConkey, like way more Lad McConkey. Oh, yeah. Like and, Lad McConkey and Xavier Leggett. It's not even close for me. And Xavier Leggett in this offense is a nightmare because like he, it, this is not his type of quarterback and Bryce Young either. Bryce Young is right. not a guy that's going to chuck it way downfield. That's mm-hmm. Leggett's game. Yeah, he's a downfield that, that, guy. Yeah, man. And that's where like. I'm a little bit nervous because I think I would have felt better if he'd be in the slot a little bit too, try to get his wheels under him. Right. But yeah, I, bad landing spot for Leggett, but hopefully he can out, you know, overcome it. A guy hasn't produced like the first four years in college or something. Yep. Or the three years and his fourth year he broke. I don't know, but yeah, I, you know, not good. Yep. And we're going to hop, hop into the next pick and you brought it up. Jonathan Brooks going into the second round Love here it. to the Panthers. Mm-hmm. And absolutely love it we said he was our running back one we said he's probably going off the board first i mean just seeing what we've seen and he, he ends up here in the second round of carolina another guy they traded up for too I mean, yep. they trade up for Leggett and brooks uh the gm office here dude <laughs> oh man <laughs> i feel bad if you're a carolina fan and I, I do feel even, bad even luke combs is calling them out really yeah because luke combs i guess is a big panther Carol- fan panther fan dude they need to do something different like and i love jonathan brooks here but like well, you need a lot of different stuff and let's talk about like jonathan brooks in this offense and jonathan brooks in general like we said like he's it's not going to be 2024 and you know we keep hearing reports all the knees going to be ready for training camp it isn't going to be it never is yeah. i mean it just isn't don't rush it i mean if you pick him you're getting the best back in this class yeah you might have to wait a year but you're mm-hmm. getting the best running back in a bad running back class yeah in an offense like you said where dave canales loves to run the ball yeah he loves to run the ball i mean rashad white had like a 77% snap share last year under canals and finished as like running back four. I definitely think that's in the range of outcomes for Jonathan Brooks. Like TJ said, maybe not this year or next, but maybe next year. Uh, Miles Sanders is on the last year of his deal. I think if Brooks is injury, like I'm like you, I, I don't, they always say like, oh, they'll be ready for camp. We'll see. But if he is ready for camp and out there, I can see a Miles Sanders trade. Yeah. Trying to get out from under that contract and just somebody. Dude, there's always a back that goes down, like, you know, camp was. Or they just cut him, you know? Yeah. I mean, that could happen too. Maybe they just eat so much dead cap money because mm-hmm. we know how Carolina is. They're not a top tier team yet. So they can afford to do that in a way. And, and I think they're going to want to run the ball here to try to help, you know, Bryce Young kind of just get himself together, compose himself. So, and they also brought in Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. Yep. So he spent like $150 million on guards to help protect Bryce Young and run the football. Yep. So, yep, for sure. So I love the Jonathan Brooks spot. We all do. We thought he'd be the best back in this class. And as far as being drafted first, and he was. Just have to be a little patient. But we're going to go to the last fantasy relevant pick here for Carolina. Jatavian Sanders landing here in the fourth round. A lot of people were thinking he was going to get better cap on that. I mean, we kind of all said it's so not. We wouldn't be surprised if he was picked higher. Mm-hmm. And he was. Yeah. So, but Jatavian lands here. We're in a team that needs a tight end. How do you guys feel about this? The opportunity is going to be there. I mean, they, they have literally nothing else unless they brought somebody in that's blanking to me. I, I can't think. But, I mean, I think I think Jatavian Sanders is a fine football player. I I think where they got him here in the fourth round is, is, is that's probably one of their better picks, honestly. I mean, yeah, yeah, I can agree with that for I, sure. And, and I like going back to Jonathan Brooks. Love Jonathan Brooks. I just don't know, like, if Carolina's in that luxury of trading up again for a running back. <laughs> right, like, right. They're just giving up capital, dude. Like, yeah. you're giving away lottery tickets. So I think an overall consensus of how we feel about Carolina is we, we like the Jonathan Brooks landing spot and pick. We like the Jatavian Sanders. Where they got him in the fourth round ain't bad. Yeah, and, and he's somebody, like, if I need a tight end, if he's in your rookie drafts in like the late third round, I'm okay. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, don't I, don't overdraft him. But like we've always said, tight ends are a scheme thing. Yeah, like dude. he he could take off or he could. I mean, right. 
Well, and, and I think the big thing here is like we like I don't see this offense being great, but I think it will improve with Dave Canales. I do too. And we said that like it, I think it will be a little bit better. I don't expect a ton out of Xavier Leggett. I think if you're an Xavier Leggett fan, this is the worst landing spot you could ask for. Mm -hmm. And we kind of knew it was coming. But overall consensus on Carolina, how you guys feel grade wise on their draft? F. <laughs> I was gonna say D. Oh. I was gonna say D minus to be a little bit nice. But <laughs> D minus. Ty, how do you feel? Yeah, I was. I'd, I'd say F two. I mean, they're the only team really in that draft that have no reason to be trading up, and they do it what two or three times. So they should have took a play out of Arizona's playbook and just kept just kept yeah. picks, kept trading back. If they didn't want their guy, if they didn't have a guy that they wanted, they traded back, got more picks. So yeah, yeah. Moss, how do yeah, you feel? I'd say a D. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree with Ty. I mean, just because we like the fantasy relevance of some of these players as far as an NFL perspective and what they did, it wasn't great. Mm -mm. I mean, it just wasn't great. And we knew it was going to be Xavier Gilligat. What a disaster. And I even was ranting about it on the live show. Like, yep. I knew it. It was coming. Yep. We so, thought TJ was going to flip the table. <laughs> I thought about it. Is there any, so what's what's the latest, like, you would take Leggett? Because, like I said, I have him as my wide receiver nine. So I think I'm a bit higher than you guys. But, like, I'm still... I don't feel good about it. I would take him maybe 206, 208. Yeah, right but around if, there. If he fell there. That, and that's the thing. Like, he's my wide receiver nine. But again, he, it, like I said, he falls into that category. Like, I'd rather take Jonathan Brooks. I'd rather take Jalen Polk. I, yeah, I, I'd rather take Jalen Polk, honestly. Like, I just don't have a lot of faith in it. <laughs> no, me either. Me either. I think it gets better, but I don't think they're going to set the world on fire. But. No. We're going to go over to another NFC South team here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, really didn't do too, too much of fantasy relevance, but they did bring in Jalen McMillan in the third round, which we do like. And honestly, that fits a role in their slot. I mean, I, I see Jalen McMillan getting that slot job. How do you guys feel about Jalen McMillan landing in Tampa Bay here? Yeah, I, I like it, man. I mean, unfortunately, must one of your Trey Palmer, like, I don't yeah. know. Got, and I did not expect this. I didn't either. I figured Trey Palmer was actually pretty, but you got Trey Palmer for what a fifth round pick. Yeah. Off your, off your waiver wire. I don't know. I, I think this was really good value. And I think a little bit of the reason why McMillan fell, uh, was just the injury. Yeah. Like, like he was hurt, missed some games, but if you go back two years ago, he looked really, really good. And then, uh, you know, go on, go on to their first round pick and Graham Barton. That was I mean, a good pick. That was a really good pick. I think this really helps the run game and Rashad White uh, or Bunky Irving. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But I mean, Jalen McMillan to me, I, I love the film. They need an, they have a need at the slot position. He's a slot type receiver. Yeah, so. yeah. Godwin's getting a little bit older. Obviously, Evans is a little bit older. They did pay Evans, so. Yeah, this this kind of helps just, you know, helps that pass game out. And we said it. We liked all three Washington receivers. Yeah. You know, and McMillan gets third round capital. We kind of figured he'd be right in here. Yeah. So not surprised. And what he's no, what number does Godwin wear? He wears 14, doesn't he? Pretty mm. sure. Maybe he could be the Steelers. Oh, yeah, that'd be wild. Yeah. A name. He, he was a name. Yeah, that was yeah, there's a name that, you know, he's he, a Penn State guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ex-Penn State. Guys. I just put that together. Maybe yeah. they're maybe we're they're... putting the puzzles together here on yeah. Dynasty DNA. Yeah, Riddle Soul. <laughs> but... Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy really liked the Chris Braswell pick. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah he kept I, bringing him up the whole night. Jimmy yeah. appreciates a good edge. Yeah, he does. <laughs> a good edge and a good guard. He kept saying, "Man, I can't believe Braswell is still there, man. That's great value." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kept hearing about it. But Jalen McMillan. Really like the player. Really like the landing spot. Yeah. So I'm excited for him. I would easily draft him anywhere th third round of my rookie draft if I have a needed receiver, depending on who's there. Mm -hmm. But I really like it. Good player. We're going to go over to the fourth round pick. This is the one here that it's like, wow, just a, what a waste of a pick. But <laughs> we'll talk about it. Bucky Irving, pick four, around four, pick 125, going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Everybody, everyone, lock the doors. <laughs> Your Rashad White shares are not safe. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people believe that. Sell, sell, sell for any second. No. Well, that's that's what I was saying. Like, you know, sell them and then buy them back. You know? Sell them and buy them. Yeah. I mean, it, it's stupid, guys. If you have Rashad White, don't don't sell him. Bucky Irving is not going to hurt him. This is a guy that we talked about. We figured they'd bring somebody in. They brought Bucky Irving in. He's not going to threaten Rashad White's job. I think Rashad White's now going to be one of your better offseason buys because of this. I mean, yeah. My, everyone might not feel that way, but it seems like the dynasty community just cannot wait to supplant 
Rashad White with somebody for yeah, whatever and, reason. And and then a lot of the fantasy community does like Bucky Irving. I mean, I didn't hate the tape, but like I didn't love it. Like it, like I can think we're all we're definitely down more than consensus on Bucky Irving. Uh it's kind of weird, dude, because like what's Rashad White, Bucky Irving, and uh Chase Edmonds good at? They're all pass catching running backs. Right, right. They don't have anybody that's like really, really good between the tackles. Right. A lot of people think Bucky Irving is, but a lot of the tackles that he broke were mainly like safeties corners. and corners. Yeah. And and see though, this is why I feel like this, like to me, they're drafting the same like Rashad White's clearly the better back, but they're drafting like a similar style. Like, okay, if Rashad White gets hurt, can we plug and play Irving and Edmonds? Yeah. You know, into yeah. that style offense. Yeah, because the workload he gets, injury could happen. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, for sure. So, so I, I, I know personally, I do. I'm not afraid of Bucky Irving. No. And if I have Rashad White, I'm not panicking. And if anything, if I, <clears throat> if I can go out and get him for a late first, I'm still doing it. Uh, I have no problem with it. I, I don't know if I would in this class because then we're looking around like Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. I think I would take Jonathan Brooks, but. Trey Benson and him. Who would you guys rather have? No, I'd rather have White. I'd rather have White. I, I would rather have White too. So I think that's so yeah. It, just, I, it depends though. If you're win now, you want Rashad White. I mean, like if you have a chance to win, yeah. win the Super Bowl, I would probably because Brooks. We talked about if Brooks is healthy, I would have no problem with it. But I think he's gonna take till 2025, unfortunately. Yeah, he probably could. It, it it's just hard for me to to do that. Yeah, it's all about preference. But Tampa Bay overall uh, grades on their draft, I give them a B. I think they did pretty well. I yeah. Mean, come away with a lot of their NFL needs. And, uh, yeah, I, I say Rashad White's a winner, in my opinion. I don't think he's threatened at all. So how do you guys feel about Tampa Bay's grade? I give him a B. Yeah, I, I give him a B as well. And I, I'm like you. I think he's definitely a winner out of this, getting Graham Barton. I mean, yeah. I, I think that really helps this offensive line. and. Uh, you know, we we could see Tampa Bay kind of continue to, you know, put up another good season, in my opinion. Yep, yep. They they have a good chance to win this division. I mean, especially maybe with Atlanta with a little uh, controversy, maybe. Yeah. They still got a good club. Ty, how do you feel about Tampa Bay's grade? What do you give them? Yeah, I'm a little higher. I'll give them an A minus. I like their first four picks, so I yeah. think a lot of spots. Yeah, Tyreek need. Smith was a good pick yeah. too. They needed another safety. Did well. How yeah. do you feel, yeah. Moss? I would go B plus. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, we're, we're I, all, I think they filled their football needs. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're all happy with the Buccaneers and what they yeah. did. But we're going to hop over to the last team, and it's a team that we knew was going to throw a shocker in. They always do. It's always offense in the first seven picks. Even if they don't need it, they still draft it. It's the Atlanta Falcons. We'll just start with Michael Penix. Been the first pick of uh, top ten for them. I mean, we kind of did not see this coming at all. I mean, we kind of said, okay, maybe Penix and Knicks will get into the first round middle back end. But, boy, the fact that he was taken inside the top ten here by the Falcons what do you guys feel about this for Atlanta and Michael Penix? So I don't think Michael Penix, in my opinion, now obviously there are scouts out there that are better than us, maybe some that aren't. <laughs> no, but uh, in all reality, I was really surprised he was the first-round pick. There was rumors, though, that the Raiders wanted to trade up. Uh, I think there was another team. I don't know if it was the Rams. I think there's a couple teams that really wanted to trade up for Michael Penix. Yeah. So, and that's something we got to remember. He went ahead of J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. Like, they could have taken J.J. McCarthy, and they felt really good about Michael Penix. So, well, that's the thing. I, I think if you take the age and injury history out of Michael Penix, I think he's a hell of a quarterback. I do, too. Yeah. I, I, but, dude, but his, you can't ignore that stuff. No. But if you do ignore that, then it's like he's – I agree with you. Like, it, and what's one thing we all said about Michael Penix? Yes, he's old, but he's a bit raw. Yeah. Right. So, now he's going to get a time to sit behind Kirk Cousins for one year. We all looked at this contract live. Uh, Kirk Cousins' deal is very top-heavy, so they could get out as early as next year. Things could not go good this year for Kirk Cousins, so something to keep in the back of your mind because this guy's slipping a lot. Like, you know, I, I recently drafted him at 112, but I've also drafted him at 2-2, two, 2-3, two, two, uh, and I've seen the other day that he fell to like 2-5, two, 2-6. Two, and if I'm picking 112, I love that because in a super flex league, you, you just won your championship. Obviously, you're sitting there. I mean, you can afford to do this. And how, like Musk said, how often can you get a top 10 quarterback at pick 12 in your super flex league? We got breaking. We got a little bit of breaking news. So this goes what Ty was saying. This is from Sleeper. The Vikings offered the Patriots 11 
23 and a 25 first with a number three pick, and they didn't do it. Wow. Showed so, you. yeah, that was plan B, just like yep. you said, Ty. Shows you how much they thought of Drake May. Yeah. New England. Yeah. To hold to hold there. But, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, yeah, I mean, Atlanta, like going back to Michael Penix, if you're picking 112 in your rookie super flex drafts, I mean, that's a steal getting him at 112, in my opinion. I mean, because you yeah. can afford to wait. Yeah. You're a good team. And you can backfill a quarterback position. It's hard to do that. And sometimes these picks, man, like this is this is this is how I'm going to finish this. You guys remember Jalen Hurts going the second round to the Eagles, and everybody said it's a horrible pick. They have Carson Wentz. You never yeah. know. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying he's Jalen Hurts. Yeah. I'm just saying sometimes that we look at these picks and laugh. That wasn't the eighth overall pick, right? But I'm just saying, like sometimes they don't make sense to us, but they end up working out. Yep, they definitely do. And, you know, obviously Atlanta's seen something they liked in Penix. Overall, like I said, uh, you know, it, the way they set this up, though, you were hoping that they would add defense or yeah, offensive line. Yeah, they really line. need to D. I mean, so like you said, it's hard to justify this high. Yeah. But, I, I mean, we do all can agree Penix is a talent if he can stay healthy. And and really, if you're a Penix fan, this, this works out good. I mean, he can get healthy. He can sit behind Kirk Cousins, and we can see what we can do with it. But – I have no problem drafting him at 112. I, I think that's great. You know, if you're sitting back there, that's a good value. Yeah. yeah. So how do you guys feel about the Falcons grade overall? That's a really, uh, surprisingly, that's the only offensive move they made. I'm surprised they didn't bring in another tight end or yeah. something else. They, so. they brought in like McClellan late and then Casey yeah. Washington. I don't even know who the hell that is. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> Special teams. Special yeah. teams. But how do you guys feel about their draft grade overall after uh, <sighs> draft night? Oh. I, I want to say F, but I'm going to give him a D minus <laughs> just because just because like like I said, th this could be a situation where Penix works out and they look like a genius. Right. I, I, I just I don't know. I mean, they're just kind of burning money. So they're turning into the new Raiders. I, yeah. I, I'm going to give them an F. I mean, it like I said, I just because like I think like you said, it could work out and it could be really good for them. And if it does, it, it will all have egg on our face. But yeah, but I uh, boy. The way you set this team up, you're kind of in win now mode. Then they know? traded it up for that a horror horror row row row. <laughs> yeah, from row row row. I don't even know. Yeah, I again, I, I don't know a lot. You know, some of these guys, but that was one that I was a little bit surprised. Yeah, yeah. he's a third round prospect. And they took him being the second round. Yeah, Ty, Tra traded up for him. Too. Yeah, give him an F. <laughs> yeah. Ty, how do you feel? Can I there? give an F minus? Yeah, <laughs> you what, can. A, what a nightmare. That was uh, funny though. That was funny seeing everyone's reactions. Moss, how do yeah, you feel? Yeah, same. I'll go an F. I, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think they did anything to really help them. So last that. question. Last question with Atlanta before we move on. And Andy said this: We're going to see Michael Penix. When do you guys think that time is? I, I think that's to be determined. Just because, like, there's there's a couple questions. Is Kurt Cousins, you know, process not going well, and and nobody knows they're not going to show their hand. Uh, is, is that not going good? Is you know is he going to be ready for week one? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I mean, that that's yet to be determined. If he is and he struggles, probably going to see him by midseason. Yeah, so, I, I they're they got to justify this pick. People's jobs are on the line for this pick. And I think yeah. I think Kirk Cousins is a loser out of this just because the heat's yeah. on, man. And then how how do we feel about the Achilles injury? Like is it yeah. going bad? Like that's the stuff we don't know. You know, I, I don't know what his value would be in a super flex league, but I would be scared to have him. I mean, it's probably not high, right? I mean, would you buy for a third? That's probably what you're selling for, and I don't know if I want to buy or sell. Yeah, it, it could be on the very edge. It's yeah. a teeter totter. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, with him being so old, I, I know. I don't know if I can justify paying a third because if it's not good, is he going to go somewhere else in two years? And yeah, do anything? Just done. Yeah, and Kirk Cousins, we've seen him bounce around. Yeah, but if, yeah, that, I had to bring that up. I mean, if if you do have Kirk Cousins, it is concerning. But but and I don't know which foot you know or leg everything's on here because that's the one thing. Like we're all worried about Kirk Cousins, but nothing's really being said about Aaron Rodgers. Like. Right. He's older than Kirk Cousins. He might be garbage now. Well, they, like <laughs> like I saw that there's two different legs. There are two I remember it was you that said, "Okay, yeah, there are two different it, legs." It's, it's Kirk Cousins' drive leg, which that that's what that doctor said. He said that that's kind of dangerous because that's where all your power comes from. Okay. He said 
Aaron Rodgers, if you're going to tear an Achilles in a leg, it's that leg that you want to tear it because okay. there's not much coming off that leg. Okay. So and that's that. That's probably that's why. The, yeah. Yep. That's probably why. How do we feel about Drake London now? I mean, because, you know, that was something that, you know, he was getting all kinds of hype. And I mean, I, I think he's okay, like with Penix, but at the same time, he's going to probably disappoint again because if it is Penix as a rookie quarterback, and we just don't know. Yeah. Just don't know. A lot of questions in Atlanta right now. Yeah, it's, it, it seems so good, but okay. I think I I think the winner out of all this is probably Bijan. Yeah, the Falcons are going to mm. Falcon. Yeah, that's yep. a good point. They did it. 